Hi, I'm Mike. I'm here again at Windy City Rails with Noel Rappin. Hey, everybody. Uh, Noel is a, is a uh, also another one of those people that have been around pretty much forever inside of the Ruby community. And, no, that's and then, frightening. Yeah, and uh, particularly here in Chicago. And you know, he often teaches. Uh, you often teach um, uh, workshops as well as um, as as speak at, at a conference. And just kind of like. Uh, you know the differences between speaking and te teaching a workshop at, at a conference. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I think there's a, there are differences of scale. Um, you know, you go to a, there's two differences really. One is the scale of it. When you're doing a, a regular conference presentation, you're speaking in front of you know 150, 200 people in a large mm -hmm. room uh, for not as much time. And those wor those workshops tend to be around a dozen people, mm -hmm. and they tend to be more intimate in scale, and you have a real you're a longer time to interact with people. And also the workshops typically are people who are specifically choosing to be in that room at mm -hmm. that time. It's an extra cost. It's a time. Uh, it's a, it's a, certainly a time investment. Whereas in a conference talk, um, people are coming to the conference more than they're coming to see you mm -hmm. in specific. So you, know, you have to maybe do a little bit more of a job of explaining why you're there and what's important to it. Um, the people that come to, to a day-long workshop, they've self-selected. They already think this is mm -hmm. important because they're spending a day on it. So. And I mean, I, I heard, I've heard people kind of describing uh, the person who's standing up in front of the audience teaching as being kind of the the um, the, the school mentor. I mean, I, excuse me, the school uh, teacher standing up in front of an audience, lecturing the audience uh, of of the students, versus um, you know the hands-on person who's who's down with the student teaching a lesson. Well, yeah, I mean, the, uh, the workshop is effective generally in proportion to the extent that I'm not talking. You know, mm -hmm. if, if I'm, and I'm you know, as guilty of this as in, in teaching as I am of anything else, if I'm spending the whole time talking, mm -hmm. you know, that's, uh, that's maybe not the most effective use of the time. You know, if somebody is asking a question, then even if it is sort of a digression, then, you know, for the course of that question, at the very least, uh, I'm answering something that is of interest to somebody in the room because right. they've asked it. Um, but even better is when people have the opportunity to really try something and have questions that emerge out of their experience uh, as they're working through something rather than trying to impose an experience on them, which is something that I could stand to get better at. And, and it also leads me to think about how an open laptop in a class is a good thing. An open <laughs> laptop during a session, uh, you know, listening to yeah. Steve Klavnik's talk, which was very... Um, um, it, it, it was a very thoughtful presentation, and Dense. seeing all the laptops open. Well, you know, I think that there's a lap. You know, there, there are there are there are different scales of that. You know, I, I'm looking around and I'm seeing people who are their laptops are open, but they're taking notes or they're using a mind map software mm -hmm. to really try and engage with the material while the pre presenter's doing it. Or people are you know checking Twitter. You know, those yeah. are those are uh, different levels of engagement, and and uh, but you can often. T Hell, from the other side of the laptop, even if you can't see the laptop yeah. screen, whether somebody's really engaging uh, with what you're trying to say or not. So. Yeah, I, I saw a lot of code on screens. You always, yeah, that you know, one thing definitely. A lot of people, are, a lot of people are still working on code. Yeah. So, I mean, has that ever been something that's been distracting for you on stage, or? Um, it's only distracting uh, as a pres as a presenter in a large room. Um, mm -hmm. It's generally distra not distracting unless they're distracting other people, mm -hmm. usually, or unless there's such a critical mass of people that have checked out that. Uh, but but that that doesn't usually happen. Yeah. Um, in a small room, it's much more obvious if a couple people have checked out, mm -hmm. um, and and that can be distracting if you're you know if you're if you're doing a workshop to even like twelve people and and two or three of them have. Uh, maybe they have valid reasons, you know, maybe something genuinely mm -hmm. important came up, but they're, they've checked out, like that, that stands out in a small right. room in a way that it doesn't necessarily. Do you ever, have you ever had that happen where you've been up on a stage and seen a bunch of uh, laptops opening up and you're like, maybe I should alter, <laughs> you know? Um, in, a, in, a, in a short form presentation that I don't, I don't normally have a, a leeway really to, to do that necessarily, mm -hmm. in, a, in a small room, I'll usually joke about it. Um, yeah. You know, I, I'll make it make it obvious that, or make it clear that I can kind of tell that they that they've checked out. Um, a lot of times, you know, in a workshop situation, um, there, there's two ways to look at it. I mean, I could be not doing a good job. Mm -hmm. um, they could be not paying attention. Like I, I don't necessarily know. Um, you know, these you know, if people come 
voluntarily to come sit in the room and they think the best use of their time is to sit in the room and, and write code, mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe it is. Um, I try not to get, I've done this enough that I try very hard not to take it yeah. personally, um, except to the extent that I try to think about what I might not be, might, what I might be doing not to, to, to not be serving. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, speaking more about the, because you've done so much teaching, you were you were you were a teacher before. Well, you taught at the college level. Only a little bit. Okay. Only only the extent that I was a graduate student, but I I, I did run some classes. Is, is have you seen any over the years? Have you seen kind of an evolution in the audience dynamic? At, at a not, not that I could say over time. I, I think that the regional conferences have gotten, you know, sort of bigger and more structured. Mm -hmm. um, that there's, you know, even just, but even just the idea of having training days as something that's a regular thing is mm -hmm. really only a couple years old. It's probably a little too soon to think of that as something that's evolving. I think that what has happened in the Ruby community is that the the regional conference, the regional conferences have become, you know, more established and and, mm -hmm. and uh, more professional and sort of better organized just in general and I think and larger and I yeah. think that that has uh, that has more of an effect on 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 what happens than than the community changing over time okay. yeah because the, the one thing with <coughs> that, kind of what makes me think about with the structure is is it uh, people are too much on a on a uh, I mean we use the word track to describe mm -hmm. you know a series of, of presentations but um, and the people tend to move on tracks and that they are almost like a school. I mean, if you think about it, it's almost like you go to class, and then you have a break, and then you go to the next class, and then you have a launch. Right, and that's that's you know, there's a limit. You know, I think that in a single track conference like this one, you know, there's it's not quite a school, but I, I, I think of it as kind of like a, a chance. As much as anything, it's a chance to hear perspectives that you wouldn't otherwise hear. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not normally going to. Um, maybe to my detriment, I'm not normally going to spend 45 minutes thinking about philosophy as it relates to my right. work, but it's a really interesting perspective to have, and now maybe I might seek it out. Um, I, I think that that uh, you know, lecture, which is what these day-long conferences tend to be, mm -hmm. um, it has its strengths and weaknesses as a right. teaching tool, but it's a really good way to introduce introduce things. Uh, it's a really good way to get a, 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 a sense that something might be interesting to you to explore. You know, I, I really like. There have been a couple talks today and yesterday that um, have had some practical things that I can you know, actually start using right now. Right. And I think that that's really great too. Yeah, I think it's nice at a conference to have a mixture of the practical and the theoretical. Yeah, I think that. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Noel, for taking the time. Thanks, Mike. All right, and we'll have a link to your book too. Oh, as great. Well. Thank you.